how are you going today? Yes, today I am deliberately shooting with flat lighting. It's good, isn't it? I'm trying to evoke the, uh, the feeling of a 1983 soap that I used to watch as a kid. It was called General Hospital. That's the look we're going for today. I hope you're with me. I hope you're embracing it. I'm loving it. I hope you're loving it. Although there's a very good chance we might put some sort of crazy filter over this just to mix it up because I love to mix things up. Why are we here today? Yes, the title said Nikon 50mm 1.2. And here it is. There it is. There it is right there. There. That is the 50mm 1.2. Let's see how sexy it is. There it is. Look how good that is. Oh my God. That is a ridiculous lens. And of course you can see me upside down through there. Isn't that cool? It is so beautiful. It is just all glass. So amazing. Wow. We're going to take it out into the streets tonight and we're going to see how the darkness and the wetness and the shininess of all that crazy light, what's it going to look like? Let's talk a little bit about this lens. It isn't the Z50mm 1.2. It is a very old, fully manual 50mm 1.2. So this is a fully manual lens. It's manual aperture, manual focus, manual data. So you do not get any data through to your body. You do not get any autofocus. You do not get any, any P or A functions. No auto aperture functions. You have to do it all yourself. <gasps> so scary, you've got to do it all yourself. No, it'll be okay. I promise, it's gonna be okay. Yes, I'm actually super excited about the fact that we do this ourselves. Because the only thing that I do automatically these days is I move a focus point around and then I let the camera acquire the focus, but I really enjoy the focus peaking that you can now find in the mirrorless cameras, which takes me to a little segue I wanted to talk about. I've used this a little bit now and I'm very, very confident that it works better on a mirrorless camera with focus peaking than when I tried to use it on my D850 just through the OVF, it's actually harder to focus that lens that way than it is by getting colors coming up. And I will show you with the Atomos Ninja, as you can see here. It's fully manual everything. It's a beautiful piece of glass. It can see in the dark. It's like a cat. I'm so excited. Let's just head on out and use it. No more talk. Let's just get on with it. isn't it okay so we're both looking at these together for the very first time I did a mix of 1.2s and 2.0s let's just bring this one up a little bit so we're going to bring up the shadows again remember I underexpose a little bit in order to maintain the highlights because if you don't do that, you lose the color in the highlights. Now with this particular lens, it looks like you lose in body stabilization, which I hadn't really, I wasn't really aware of that. Um, I, I need to do a deeper dive on it, but I think that's the case. So as you can see, my shutter speed is 1 25th. ISO is ISO 400. I was either shooting at 1.2 or 1.4 or maybe as much as 2. But it does allow you to shoot in these very low light conditions. As you can see, the Z7 is controlling things at 400 ISO very, very well. Because that's when its circuitry kind of starts again. So really, at 100%, we're seeing, well, very, very little grain. So that is a great result. It's very dark, it was about 1 a.m. at this point. Now, we can see this lens, you know, in here, this, this, this looks pretty sharp. You know, this is where I was focusing across this plane here. 
and, and I think that's pretty damn sharp. Obviously, it's not as sharp as the new Z 50 mil. Like, no way. But it's still pretty sharp. But what we can see is it's as it falls out of focus, it does get a little bit kind of kind of soft in a weird way. Um, and then, of course, we have the purple fringing that we can see here. And um, I think Capture One has a tool for that somewhere. Capture One does have a tool for purple fringing. I don't really have to use it with the Z cameras and the Z lenses. It really is, is hardly exists. Uh, we, well, we can see it's it's doing a little bit, but I don't think that tool is that effective. But yeah, let's look, let's remove some of it. Um, there are other tools and we could do better. I'm not an expert in purple fringing removal, but hey, Maybe we should become purple fringing removal experts. But I, li I like that. I like that result. We'll bring those shadows up a bit more. We don't need to mess with saturation. Um, we could change color temperature. I quite like that colder look as well. That's way too cold. But that's quite nice in there somewhere. So this is what the camera did. And I think I like that better. We could probably bring up the exposure a smidge and then because the lens is quite soft I might use some structure or some clarity to just make it feel a bit sharper but I am pretty happy with that result there that's that's a pretty good outcome so that is the 50 mil 1.2 at 1.2 ISO 400 on the Z7 great stuff now we've got all those settings Where's that image gone? It's down here somewhere. Let's grab that image. Let's give it five stars. Grab its settings. And then we can paste those over to another image. Yep, I like that. I think it's too crispy. So let's turn it down a bit. But that's nice. Now remember I shoot with flat colors. So I reckon we could bring them up a smidge. Because I'm shooting flat. And I'd probably change that color temperature a bit. Yeah, I like the blue, I like the blue here versus the yellow here. That's quite nice. Rather than it all being, oh yeah, I really like that. I really like that a lot. That is very nice. And and what look, what we could do to bring more of a contrast to those two colors, we can create a layer here in Capture One. And we just separate these areas from each other. There we go. So just just here really, that's all we need to do. And then we get our new layer, as you can see up here appears, and we can change the color temperature and bring it back to where it was. And then that's that's the difference. You just So all that is is a change in color temperature. It is not saturation. Love it. Absolutely love that. I think that's a cracker. Five stars for that one. I absolutely love this one. This is fantastic. Uh, we can bring this down and it's just still really nice. Let's stick it about there. That's a very small difference. And let's have a little look at what this does. Oh, yeah, I do like that. Oh, that's nice. The soft and the sharp. Yes, that's really, really, really nice. Great result. Very happy with that. Yeah, that is beautiful. Now, I would consider bringing up this area a smidge, just a smidge, maybe. So let's get our layer tool. And this is a different, a different area. So we have to create a new layer. And then we're going to get our brush. Yep. Yeah somewhere in here like so we're going to do this there we go now the tool has a fill in function like so that that has filled in you can't see it but there you see how it's filled in and then we've got our layer and we can make our adjustments to our layer so if we want to make it just a little bit Yes, oh, I like that a lot. I like that a lot. That is fantastic. That's a win. 
go the 50 mil 1.2. All right, all right, all right, moving right along. We have the next one again. I do underexpose. We can see here that you can bring all of this stuff up and it's just looking great. Love it. So we're gonna give that five stars and we'll keep moving along. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, so you can see here the 50 mil, it does not cloak with flare. There's a lot of ghosting in that flare in there. It looks cool in this scenario here, but in this scenario here, I don't, I personally don't like it so much. And maybe if we cropped through here, let's go a square crop. When you're straightening, it's always good to find a line that's closer to the center, because on the edge, things can start to fall off. Yep, I like that. I like that, great. And then I was really enjoying this shot uh, here I could tell, sometimes I can tell when I'm going to be really happy with something. I just like the color, but let's see, again, color temperature is so amazing, yeah. No, I like it, I like it more golden. Yeah, let's just stay golden, that's the way the camera did it. I had just had it on auto. We'll bring up clarity, and we'll bring up shadows a bit more, but I really like that. I, this tree here I find distracting, so I'm going to just go back to the original and we're going to just crop enough to get that out and that doesn't change things very much yeah i think that was a good call sorry just a little bit of it still there boom as i said before i try not to crop but um i had something on my right here because a bin so i was a little bit and, and as i got closer to the bikes um it changed the frame that i wanted so this was kind of the compromised sweet spot. I did creep closer to the bikes as you can see for the reasons I just talked about but I, I knew that I preferred the original framing. Let's have a look at what this looks like. Oh I still like that but I think I like the original better. Let's have a look at them side by side. Hmm tough yeah no I think I like the top one better. Oh this is a beautiful building and again this is the color of the sky as per registered by the camera's color temperatures. As you can see here, nothing is done to saturation. This is just how the, the camera's seeing it, which is pretty cute. So let's just bring that up a bit more. Looking good. this absolutely just love this image gorgeous and I'm not sure which one I like better that one or that one you tell me I think it's this one I prefer we'll call this one well this is 95 and this is 99 but that is gorgeous and that would have been at 1.2 on the Z6 at 100th of a second as you can see here just pulling the whole thing out of focus fantastic We've got some lovely images from our walk around. Let's choose this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, that one, that one. Love it, love it. They're the ones we are going to output so you can see them high res on the screen. Yep, great. And go. Back to Matt in the gallery. See ya. What an amazing lens. It can see in the dark. Yes, at 1.2, it, it's soft. It's a little bit soft, but once you get up to something like 1.4, 1.8, the thing is legendary. And quite frankly, a little bit of softness doesn't bother me because for my work, it's all about the atmosphere. It's all about the vibe. It's not about ultra sharpness. So I love this lens. I'd love you and you to tell me what you think of this lens. What did you think of the images that uh, I showed as we went through? I'd love you to tell me. Add it to your Z arsenal and then you can do some amazing things at fairly affordable prices. It's worth thinking about it because the Z 1.2, you know, it might be four or $5,000. I'm not sure, who knows? 
probably more like two and a half if it's similar to the Canon ones. Whereas this US might be five or $600. So significantly cheaper with some interesting results. Yeah, this is so exciting that we're getting some prints off of this beautiful old lens. I'm so excited. Let's print, shall we? Well, as a final chapter, something exciting has happened. Uh, I have just recently been invited to be part of an exhibition. I've been able to choose the images that I want to print. Time is a little of the essence. So we're going to be printing some uh, almost one meter, so about three feet wide prints. And I have chosen three new prints, two of which are shot on the 50 millimeter 1.2. As always, thank you so much for being here. It's so lovely to see you. Please subscribe if this is your first time here. That's how we see each other again. Please like, please share. Please, if you want to see over 150 videos right now, click on the Meadow and Photography just down here. And of course, come visit us in this amazing space. We would love to see you here. All right, bye.